So this must be the minimum energy. What does it contain? Hard to, hard to interpret this, but let us interpret this. An electron 2 is sitting on chi j. I am integrating for an electron sitting in chi i, one electron sitting in chi i. The electron 2 is sitting in chi j. I am giving an average interaction, one particle interaction. This is the density, remember chi j star chi j. It is just giving an average one particle interaction on an electron sitting with chi i t. This is the classical electrostatic interpretation for the Coulomb term that I have an electron 1 which is sitting on chi i tilde, there are other another electron sitting in chi j tilde, it is moving all across, I mean very, it is a classical interpretation. So, electrons are not moving, it is a density. So, the entire density chi j star 2 chi j 2 is integrated between d tau 2. So, integration essentially means it moves all across and what the electron 1 sees due to that. So, this is a classical electrostatic force that the electron 1 sees due to the movement of 2. Of course, you can say what about 3, what about 4, I do not need to do, that has been achieved by the sum. Again, I repeat. So, everything can be 2. So, I just re rename these electrons, they are in different spin orbital, is it clear? So, it is basically a classical electrostatic interaction that the electron 1 sees due to electron 2 and, and then one particle part has been extracted by average, because I need a one particle part. That has been extracted by d tau 2. Essentially, that means the 1 and 2 are dynamic, but 1 sees a total average effect when 2 com moves, a com makes a complete movement. Assume they are classical particles, then 2 could have made a 1 full circle over electron 1. Then on that circle, after that, what is the potential that the electron 1 sees due to electron 2 is, the, is what is captured here in this, in this square bracket. Okay, so that is the, I am now going into the interpretative part of the Hartree form, which I will write maybe in the next class, but let me first state, I will write that more clearly, the interpretation. But now, I have another part, exchange part, which I am not able to interpret, because now that is, this is not a density. Chi, so, electron 1 is, was sitting in chi i 1, now this electron 1 is sitting in chi j 1. So, this was chi i 1, this was chi j 2, now they have flipped, it has gone to chi j 1. And, and the and the and the d tau 2 inter interpretation is also very funny, it is on 2 on chi i and this is chi j star. So, I do not know what interpretation I will give, but that is the nature of the exchange, that is the nature of the antisymmetry that one that no electrons are not classical. So, that is something that I have learned from the beginning when I wrote the energy also. I could not give an exchange a classical interpretation to exchange interaction, I am not able to give a classical interpretation to this operator, whatever this operator is, okay. And then of course, I have a further problem that this is not in the eigenvalue equation structure yet, because it is not a number times chi i tilde 1. If it were a diagonal, it would have been number times chi i tilde. I hope all is clear, right. If this were diagonal, this j is equal to i, so it would have become number times chi i tilde 1, but let us, let us not worry about it right now, we will see how to do that. So, that would be actually a canonical Hartree form. When this, so when lambda becomes diagonal, we will actually get, now I can tell you what is canonical, that will actually lead to canonical Hartree form. How to achieve this? I cannot make an approximate, because if I approximate this, then that is wrong, because then you are saying canonical is only an approximate. That is not true. We will achieve this by exact means. So, that there is a lot more uh, to it, but right now we are stuck with the non-canonical, but our problem is that I cannot still, even if it was canonical, I cannot make it into an eigenvalue equation form because of this exchange part. So, assuming that this is a diagonal, I cannot still write it as an eigenvalue equation form because of this guy. See, this is already eigenvalue, something times chi i tilde 1, something times chi i tilde 1 something times chi i tilde 1. I mean, I would only assume the diagonal, but how, what about this part? And that was his question. And so, the exchange part will always have a problem. However, I will quickly show you that formally, mathematically, I can derive an operator 
by making it making this look like a chi tilde 1 because that is what we want. The 1 should be on chi i tilde right on the right hand side. So, let me analyze this term. So, let me come back only to the exchange term of this which is chi j star 2 1 by r 1 2 what is it chi i 2 d tau 2 chi j 1 right. No interpretation because chi j star 2 chi i 2 is no exchange. It is an it is a it is it is it is it is not a density because this is j ring by sum over j of course. Now, what I will now do is strictly mathematical and you may even consider that as a cheating, but it is mathematical. What I will do I will write this as sum over j chi j star 2 1 by r 1 2 I will introduce between these an operator which you are already aware of permutation operator p 1 2 permutation operator interchanges 1 and 2. So, I will write this p 1 2 and then of course, they have to be interchanged. So, this guy will now become chi j 2 and then d tau 2 and this guy will go out as chi j 1 perfect I have no problem. You may only say what what we will do permutation of that that is the later part. I want to write a formally uh, eigenvalue equation right. So, what I did was simply nice mathematics I just brought this inside p 1 2 between 1 by r 1 2 and this and moment I do this p 1 2 this 2 will be equal only if I have interchanged 1 and 2 on the right because p 1 2 acts only on the right. We have already done what is p 1 2 permutation operator right. So, I am going to bring the permutation operator here and then then write this term very easily. So, now this term would be written as p 1 2 chi j 2 d tau 2 so tilde is tilde is whatever chi i 1 beautiful right. Now, we have something acting on chi i tilde 1 equal to assume this is diagonal we will talk about that number times chi i 1 right. Now, the question is what is this? This we know it is electrostatic interaction of 1 by r 2 this is also an electrostatic interaction you can assume of 1 by r 1 to p 1 2 that is my operator who cares? It is just that the operator is not a classical operator. So, during that process of the Hamiltonian I am saying that Hamiltonian has a 1 by r 1 2 for the classical Coulomb part for the exchange part it is actually 1 by r 1 to p 1 2 that is all I am saying for only if you want to interpret, but that interpretation is up to you physical interpretation, but if I write it like this then I can immediately write the Hartree-Fock equation in a nicer form ok. It is all, all about writing nicer form all are right the original one was right. So, now what I do? I define an operator called f. Now, this is something that you know Fock operator. This operator is called Fock operator f of 1 which is just the operator h of 1. So, I am not going to write the chi i tilde 1 they will be all out plus sum over j I am only writing the operator part chi j star 2 of course, this has to be integrated 1 by r 1 2 1 minus p 1 2 chi j tilde 2 I am going to do even more simpl simplification. I do not want to write the coulomb and the exchange right. I just achieve this 1 by r 1 to 1 minus p 1 2 1 gives me the coulomb p 1 2 gives me the exchange no problem. So, eventually I am doing a classical interpretation of an operator called 1 by r 1 to 1 minus p 1 2 as if electron 2 sitting in chi j thing and they are interacting via this potential. The potential I have only changed from 1 by r 1 to 2 particle potential has become 1 by beautiful. If this is what it is then all my Hartree-Fock equation is just f of r 1 chi i tilde 1 equal to sum over j lambda i j chi j tilde 1 that is my general Hartree-Fock equation is it is it ok. Now, I have very very simplified. I think I have to go through once more if necessary I will go through once more tomorrow the entire algebra because this is the part which is which is never done 
in the classes because they just come to that equation finally. So nobody wants to derive this dirty thing. So I have taken the risk of deriving risk, the trouble no, because the derivation I can do while sleeping also. So there is no trouble for me. The risk because it may put you off. <laughs> so I have only taken the risk, no trouble for me, do not worry. Uh, I can keep on deriving every time you want that. So eventually I get a very nice Hartree-Fock equation that is called the non-canonical Hartree-Fock equation where f of 1 is defined as this. So I have written everything now, these two lines write my Hartree-Fock equation. If provided I can make lambda diagonal, it will be a canonical Hartree-Fock equation. I will see how to do that. That is a, that is a final part in the jigsaw puzzle that I will leave, but both are right. We will see formally exactly you can make it canonical Hartree-Fock equation. So both are okay. But this is a general non-canonical form which is yet not in the eigenvalue equation structure simply because this is not diagonal. Otherwise it is equal to something and you know that diagonal values, if I can make it diagonal, those are my orbital energies. All of you already know f chi equal to epsilon chi, right? Everything is known to you, all of you. So I am going to come to that a little bit later, but that is the final piece which I leave it as it is. And before I do that, I have to lot of other observations I have to make. So this then becomes an Hartree Fock operator. So does it does it answer your question? How can I do it? Mathematics allows me. <laughs> no, not the physics, but this was a clever trick. If you want to write it in this form. But okay, eventually when you integrate, it will become complicated. The exchange part will spread. So that is the problem of the exchange part. That see, physically, I am not saying that problem is simplified. But see, because the P12 is a non-local operator. Note what is the problem? Why it is spreading? As you said, for exchange, because of P12. So if you look at this operator, this is a non-local operator in a very way of saying. And this is where later on you will see the problem of density functional theory comes in, because this is density, no question. But unfortunately, here it is a non-local. So when people want to write density functional theory with local exchange, it is an approximation. That is why LDA is an approximation. And this is the biggest problem in density functional theory. How can I do it without, without actually doing like Hartree Fock? But Hartree Fock, there is no problem. We can do it, we have no problem. Because it is only a question of an iterative solution. Well, I will come to the solutions and all that later. But I think first you should digest the equation. So remember, I, I had a Lagrangian first when I started. It's a long process. I again repeat what we did, and you have to go. No, okay. So you had a Lagrangian, and then we said that if I make these changes on chi i till I did not bother about change in the in the with respect to lambda because anyway that will give you the equation that was already known. If you change chi i first order change, first order change in Lagrangian should be zero. The Lagrangian explicitly included this. So then I made a first order change. So that was delta chi L1, then they had delta L equal to 0. Then I found that there are lots of terms. Of course, the complex conjugate part I had already knocked out. Then within the Coulomb and exchange, I found that both the terms are identical. So the half was knocked out. There was only one Coulomb and one exchange with delta chi I1 on the left. Delta chi one star one left. So since I have integrated the whole thing to be zero, the integrand was equal to zero because for arbitrary delta chi i one, if I do, this is called integrand. What is being differentiated? What is being integrated? That integrand was equal to zero, and that was my equation. And on this side, the similar thing came. This was my integrand. Then I wanted to write down the integrand, that g of one, which basically turns out to be of this form, where everything is now a function of one, but where explicitly chi i tilde one appears. So if I now say that integrand has an operator acting on chi i tilde 1, what is my g of 1? The g of 1 is nothing but this operator, you remember the g of 1 I wrote, that was integrand, it is operator f of i chi i tilde 1 for each i. So g of, g of 1 will keep changing, okay. So you remember my final equation was delta chi i star 1 g of 1, right, minus sum over j lambda i j delta chi i star 1 chi j 1, right? This is my original form, beta 1. Now I am saying this integrand is nothing but an operator times chi i tilde 1. 
where the operator is uh, has the age plus the the exchange and the coulomb term plus the exchange and the coulomb term okay of the operator which actually is contained in the g which is basically given here the interpretation of the exchange is the difficult part we still don't know how to do it and uh, how to actually mathematically implement that is very easy that i will show the next time but so this was basically the equation that i said and this particular operator is called the fock operator one important thing however to note is that this fock operator is not defined offline the fock operator is not defined offline because to define fock operator i need the kaiser theorem this is a very important part to note. If you, if, even if this was an eigenvalue equation, normally what you will do? I have an operator, just diagonalize. I will get chi i tilde 1. But here you cannot get because your operator is not defined. The definition of operator itself depends on this, which is supposed to be the output of this, this equation. So you can see that even then, even the Hartree Fock, which looks like a now an operator eigenvalue equation, assuming this is diagonal, canonical form. It is still not easy to do because I do not have the operator form. So, even the canonical Hartree Fock equation is really not an eigenvalue equation. Many times this is called the pseudo eigenvalue equation. And we will we will discuss in detail how do you solve it after I first get the canonical Hartree Fock equation. So, there are two important pieces that are still left. How do I canonicalize? I am now assumed it is canonicalized, and then how do I actually solve it? Because f depends on the chi's. So the important point here is that because f depends on chi's, obvious way to solve one obvious way to solve is an iterative solution. That is, assume some chi's, define the Fock operator, then solve the eigenvalue equation. Assume it is can canonical. Get the new set of chi's again. Redefine Fock operator and continue to do till it converges. All mathematics you know how to do that iterative solution. When it converges, what it means is that the field, what is the field? The field is of chi j. Chi j is a field of the electron 2. That field which is defining the Fock operator is the same which comes out after solution of the Fock operator. Because after solution I am getting the spin orbitals. The field which defines the input comes comes as the same field as output. So my, my field is chi i tildes. So that defines my Fock operator. That's a box, and then I solve some HF equation, right? HF equation. I get the same chi i. If that happens, that is what happens at the convergence point. Normally, no. When that happens, I'm very happy because I have actually solved the equation, and this is the reason. It says that the field which defines the Fock operator is the same field that comes out of the Fock operator and we call it self consistent field. Or symbol SCF. You might have heard the word SCF many times. SCF has been synonymously used as Hartree Fock actually. But let me again repeat Hartree Fock is a method. SCF is only a procedure to solve Hartree Fock. Many people forget because somebody can come up with another way to solve this equation. Okay. SCF is a procedure where I solve the Hartree Fock equation iteratively till the field which defines the Fock operator becomes the out, output of the Fock operator. So, that is the reason many times Hartree Fock is called self consistent field. But remember, SCF is a procedure. Many people confuse actually. Because we normally now say SCF method. We even forget that the Hartree and Fock did it. But Hartree and Fock actually derived the method. SCF is merely a procedure. I can use some other method, procedure. Of course, many people write HF SCF method just to make sure that they are right. Hartree Fock and then self consistent, right? You have seen all kinds of nomenclature in the programs and textbook. So I am just trying to make sure that you understand that the, this is Hartree Fock. The procedure to solve this equation is SCF. Even the canonical part cannot be solved easily because of the fact of dependence of f on the chi, and that is where SCF comes. I will again repeat these points, of course, and write down tomorrow. One, two, three. After 
everything is done. Uh, but one very important piece is canonical errors that I have not touched yet, okay. So, that will take little bit more time. Once I do that, uh, this is a small thing, but it is very important, okay, because we usually use, however, I do not have to teach you canonical hatha reporting because this is still right, okay. Everything I will show you, everything is same except the orbitals. Orbitals will change, energy will be same. But unless you have a canonical Hartree-Fock equation, you will have a problem in chemistry because you do not know what is orbital energy. Like orbital energies are eigenvalues of the Fock operator, here there is no eigenvalues. So, you cannot do ionization potential, you cannot do electron affinity, all that homo, lumo that you have seen, I cannot do it. The only thing that I have achieved is the Hartree-Fock energy. Hartree-Fock energy will remain the same, the final energy, okay. So, I have to bring in canonical equation. Okay, I can assume that how you can do it and write it, but that is not a good way of doing it. I will show how to do it, bring it formally and then you will have all those interpretations, homo energy, lumo energy, homo minus 1, lumo plus 1, all kinds of things that you people talk, they will all come after that. That interpretation of orbital energy, Koopman's approximation will not come unless I go to canonical equation. So, this is a very important piece just for the time being to make you understand I have assumed it is canonical. But, but this is a very important point. Even if it is so, the Fock operator is depends on the spin orbital. So, it has to be solved by an SCF procedure, self consistent field procedure. So, if I ask you to write what is self consistent field, you should be able to write properly. Okay.